Welcome to Ben Lohman Historic Site. My name is Lance, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the architecture of the enslaved quarters here at Ben Lohman. Now, this is one of my favorite structures on site, and I often refer to it as the most interesting building on site. Why? Well, because there's a lot of uh, different iterations of how this building was used, and at one time it may have been a store, at one time it may have even been Benjamin Tasker Chin's uh, bachelor quarters as the the main house was being built but most recently is uh, we've we've uncovered a lot of evidence to prove that it was also used as the enslaved quarters uh, now this this particular structure is very special there's only three enslaved quarters left standing here in Prince William County and this is the only one that is still open to the public uh, now why do I say that it is the most interesting building on site well, because as I like to describe it in my tours, is Benjamin Taskerchin is a wealthy gentleman farmer, but most of his wealth is in land and not in hard liquidatable assets. So to build such a fine structure as this, it's very odd. The only time that we see stone structures that match the house or any say brick structures that match a brick house is at much, much larger and much more prestigious plantations. Places like Stratford Hall or Boone Hall in Charleston, South Carolina. Both of these have structures that match the main house, and they're arranged in a promenade style arrangement where as a guest is approaching the house, they see the least architecture to the greatest ending in the big house. The only time that structures like this would exist are in that arrangement and with that type of wealth. So it's rather odd that we have this well-built stone structure uh, for the enslaved persons here at Ben Lomond. One of the reasons why we think that this happened is we think that over the two years uh, that the main house was being built, we think that Bedroom and Tasker Chin probably lived here and used this as his bachelor quarters. He's not going to camp out for two years. He might stay with relatives three miles away, but three miles journey is a long ways to go just to check on your house. Uh, back in 1830 to 32. And so we think that most likely he stayed in here. And there's a couple architectural clues that I'm going to point to on the inside of this place that will support that. So one of the clues why we think this was first used as Benjamin Tasker's uh, bachelor pad, we can find in the paint. If you look here, you'll see this very faded light blue paint. Um, this is 180 plus year old paint, and it's made using ground up oyster shells that come from the lower Chesapeake Bay. To get all the way here to Manassas in the 1830s, is the, the oyster shells are first ground up, and then put in a canister in a powder form, shipped up the Potomac, and then carted out here from Alexandria. That powder is then mixed with water, and it uh, is then used as a paint. It takes over a week for that whole traveling process just to make it here. So it seems rather odd that uh, for one, there's only one layer of paint. If you painted it and you were going to continue that tradition, you'd paint it over and over. Um, and we also find it odd that, you know, we have to remember that the enslaved persons are the invisible workforce. When we look at the architecture of the main house, anywhere where they touch is a lower grade of architecture is if if there are not uh, enslavers in the house, it is a lower form of architecture. So we look at this, uh, the basement, we see that. And so it seems odd, why would somebody take the time to paint this? It's not to preserve the wood because there's only one layer of paint. Most likely it was painted in this uh, Southern blue tradition, because in the South, it's very popular to paint your ceilings blue uh, for a couple different reasons. One is to uh, keep the bugs away because they don't know where to land. That's one theory. The other is to ward off spirits. It is, again, very odd that this would be done only once. You also have to remember, paint has to be painted often. And, you know, give it about two, three years, you're probably going to have to repaint it with this oyster shell paint. However, in two years, the main house was finished. And so that's why we think that it is, then it was probably neglected for the lifetime of this structure. The second clue. Now, this is a very nice fireplace, and it's very atypical for 
an enslaved structure. I once had a British woman on tour who said, now that's a proper fireplace. And uh, one of the things is typically in an enslaved quarters, you would see a square fireplace, oftentimes no hearthstone, and it goes straight back. This does none of those things. This is a rectangular one that follows the Greek golden ratio. So it's very well proportioned. It also has angles to the firebox, which reflects more heat out. This was a New England invention that was pretty revolutionary. It's suddenly how uh, you could keep a room much, much warmer. And then there is a proper hearthstone raised off of the floor. All of these things point to a proper gentleman's fireplace, not an enslaved quarters for its primary purpose. Now, the last clue here in the enslaved quarters that we think that maybe it was used as something else first was that uh, on each side of the enslaved quarters here at that moment, there is a rear window. Enslaved quarters opened, uh, all windows and doors opened to the main house. I am facing the main house, uh, but here, this is a window that somebody could easily pass through. The reason why windows and doors were put through the front is so the enslaver could watch the enslaved come and go. Uh, so, however, if somebody is living here for two years, probably not just going to want to have the front door. So we think that Benjamin Tasker Chin may have had this put in while boy, he was living here. And we've talked about uh, him living here. However, after the main house is built, and it's finished in 1832, is the enslaved that are permanent to the Ben Loman plantation live here in the quarters. And this is divided into two sides, and there were anywhere from eight to 10 enslaved persons year round, but as many as 18 total in the high season when enslaved persons were rented. So you can imagine this space that's somewhat comfortable for one person, uh, then becomes very crowded when there's anywhere from four to nine people in this one room. When you come to Ben Loman and you visit the enslaved quarters, you'll notice that it's very close to the main house. This is not its historic location. Historically, it was on the other side of the house, past the smokehouse dairy kitchen and the road. So it was out of sight of the main house. Why is this? Well, in 1979, is we realized what it was. Um, archaeologists confirmed that it was an enslaved quarters. And so through a grassroots movement, is uh, the slave quarters was lifted up, moved to its present location. Now, here in Prince William County, there were hundreds of enslaved quarters, but through time, they have just been torn down. We are fortunate enough to still have this one preserved. Now, is why wouldn't this be on this side of the house to begin with? Well, it would be improper. You have to remember that the enslaved persons who worked here at Ben Lomond, they were the invisible workforce. They were not to be seen. They were not to be acknowledged. And so it would be improper for them to cross the front or the back uh, formal or proper entrances to the house. And so it makes a lot more sense that in their daily duties, they would come and commute from across the road to the dairy, the smokehouse, the kitchen, into the house through the slave entrance and return home the same way. If you would like to find out more information about how the enslaved lived and worked here at Ben Loman Historic Site, here, uh, you can stop by for a tour and we'd be happy to show you around. You can also visit us online or on our Facebook or YouTube channel. Thank you for taking the time, and we look forward to seeing you.